Martin Luther King Jr. told that story of Rip Van Winkle at the 1966 General Assembly of Unitarian Universalists. 1966. I mean, if you do the math, that is 54 years ago. And yet somehow we are still talking about white people needing to wake up. This reminds me of two truths. First, that waking up is never a one-time experience, but rather a commitment that we make again and again. So that maybe better than thinking about beloved community as a destination, we should think of it more as a way of life. Just like with the good guys and the bad guys, there is no fixed status that we arrive at called woke, but rather waking up is a practice that we live out or don't in the smallest choices of our every day. Because the second truth is that racism and the lure of white supremacy is a powerful force that is woven into our culture and into our country, made even more powerful because undoing it requires our willingness to stay present to our heartbreak. Teacher Parker Palmer writes that there is no way for the heart to break. Parker Palmer says there is no way to be human and to not have your heart broken. There's no way to be human and to not have your heart broken. But he says there are at least two ways for the heart to break. The heart, he says, can be broken into a thousand shards, sharp edged fragments that sometimes become shrapnel aimed at the source of our pain. This is the sort of heartbreak that draws the lines between us ever more sharply. It meets pain with pain, fuels revenge and keeps alive cycles of abuse for generations. This way of the heart breaking animates our country's current system of criminal justice, which relies on a retributive framework that imagines violence could somehow fix violence, or that the only way to respond to harm is with more harm. It's also the sort of heartbreak that systemic racism relies on when it turns the heartbreak of economically disadvantaged whites against people of color and immigrants as the outgoing Trump administration has done repeatedly over the last five years and has been a pattern throughout our country's history. But Parker Palmer reminds us that there is another way to visualize what a broken heart might mean. He says, imagine that small clenched fist of a heart broken open into the largeness of life, that is into a greater capacity to hold one's own and the world's pain and joy. He says, we know that heartbreak can become a source of compassion and grace because we have seen it happen with our own eyes as people enlarge their capacity for empathy and their ability to attend to the suffering of others. In our daily moment by moment commitment and our practice of waking up, it matters how we hold our heart break how we live with this tension between the world as we wish it was and the world as it is. I mean, will we allow it to enlarge our empathy or sharpen the lines between us and around us? Turning toward grief can be scary. And everything in our culture tells us to do the opposite, that is to numb it or compartmentalize it or simply to move on. But the great secret of grief is that turning from it doesn't actually lessen its impact, but only fosters the sort of heartbreak that shatters and wounds us and those around us. Surely this will be our temptation as we emerge for the, from the pandemic and all of the losses of this last year, surely this will be our temptation as we transition from the current administration to the next. We will all be tempted to simply move on. 
but if instead we can stay present to our own and to each other's suffering, even as we emerge from this time, if we can give grief its due, then this heartbreak holds also our hope. That is our hope for real healing and transformation. Hope for our country as we commit day after day, moment by moment to create together the beloved community. <laughs>